Michelle Obama. Now, uh, we're always so happy you, you come on the show. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I, I noticed that you went back. You went back to the White House recently. Mm -hmm. uh, you haven't been back no. uh, since. Uh, Wasn't invited. The. Uh... <laughs> Ooh, she. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm adding, I'm adding a chapter right here. Hold on. Uh, oh, yeah. And so you, you, you return. Mm -hmm. I, I, what did it feel like to go back and you go, oh, yeah, I lived a lot of time yeah, in this place? Yeah. We were we were good when it was time to go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it was really a beautiful experience because, that, you know, that's a tradition. You do your official portraits. The next president is supposed to invite you back to hang them. We were never invited back. So these pictures have been done for a long, long time. So, but it's also a chance for the staff to come back and reminisce and to be together. It's a, it's a ritual. So it was good to see everybody. It was good to see all of the staff. I mean, you, as quiet as it's kept, my girls lived in the White House longer than they lived any house. Yeah. So that's where they grew up. So to go back and to see all the staff that are still there, to see you know all the people that they grew up with, it was really well. The girls weren't there at the time, but it was good for Barack and I do to see ever, everyone. Do you ever have dreams that you still live there? Oh no! Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that like that. It's like no, no, no. I don't. I don't. You don't have dreams. You don't ever anything. go like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go down the steps here and I no, do that. No, no. Funny story. Um, at Bi Biden's inauguration, um, all the ex formers gathered and they were doing a public service announcement and then we had to leave. And this is the first time Barack attended, uh, I think he was there when somebody else's presidential motorcade was out. So he walks out and usually the first car up is the president, right? And yeah. he goes walking to the first car and his it, security is like, sir, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not your car. He's Oops. like, oh. he's like, okay, well, where do I go? So we had to pass the presidential motorcade, then the VP, and then we went way back. Wow. And then it was ours because you go in uh, descending order. You're like, um, but I was just. But the thing was, we were so glad to get in that back motorcade and to go home. Yeah. <laughs> to our house. To your actual and to, house. And to you know, that's the. Progress of democracy. You do your time. You pass it on. You let the next uh, president lead, and yeah. so it was. Uh, it's it's kind of a relief. Uh, are you uh, <laughs> in this book? There's so many great uh, stories about your life. There's also uh, tips on how to deal with what we're dealing with, or any mm -hmm. with everything with what we all isolation with COVID, yeah. and it's just everything is kind of. Uh, touched in this book, and I, I, one thing I loved is the power of small. Yeah, yeah, that's that's one of the early chapters because I, I, I wrote this chap chapter particularly for young people who are feeling so anxious about the state of the world. I mean, no wonder climate change, riots on Capitol Hill, gun violence, on and on. And these young kids, young kids as early, or young as 15, are trying to figure out how to solve these problems, and they're getting all twisted because they don't yet have the power, um, because they're trying to bite off too much too soon. And so the power of small is to focus on what you can uniquely control. And for a kid in high school, it's graduating from high school. You know, get your education, because yep. you can't do that. You can't end violence in your neighborhood unless you, you focus on what's at hand. So starting small, even for us as adults, is about focus on your own knitting, because there's power in that. You know, if each of us just raised the children we bring into the world, you know, we did nothing else but do that. Oh, just imagine where we would be as a nation, as a human race, if we just took care of that. Yeah. You know, if we showed them the love and the focus and if we put our time and energy into that instead of trying to solve all the big problems. So change happens in small bites. It's not just the big stuff. Yeah, because it starts small, then it goes to a family, then yeah. it goes to a community, and Absolutely. that's it's great. Uh, uh, there's also a chapter dedicated to uh, when they go low, we go high. Well, people still keep asking me. You, you still mean that? Yeah. <laughs> but that still? was that was an epic line. That was just. It just, it, it's, it's stuck in everyone's yeah. head. Did you realize how powerful that would be years after? You no, no, I didn't know I'd be uh, 
uh, known for that line, but I, I'm proud of that. Um, people ask me, do I still, do I ever go low? And yeah, I go low. <laughs> you <laughs> go low a lot of times, but I think for people who have a platform, who are being looked up to, we have a responsibility to stay high because kids are watching us. Um, if you need to go low, go low at home. <laughs> Do it with your kitchen table, with your spouse. But we set the example because leaders set the tone and we felt what it's felt like to be led with low and it didn't feel great. Um, that's why it's important. It's a practice, it's a habit. It's something we show the next generation. That we don't, that doesn't mean we settle. That doesn't mean we're complacent. It means we think before we speak because words matter. And I still believe that. And I try the best that I can when I'm in the public eye, when I know that kids are watching, to stay high because high begets high. That's right. Uh, no. Uh, you went on a book tour around the country and you had amazing conversations with amazing people, uh, our pal Gail King, who we mm -hmm. love, Tyler Perry, uh, of Hoda Kopi, David Letterman, David Letterman, oh, so many sure, uh, Conan O'Brien, yeah, sure. Yeah, all right, all right. I mean, you were fine. busy. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, but, you know, it's always time for another book, you know? Um, <laughs> uh, but the list is uh, an amazing people, and you turned it into a podcast. Yeah. And this is great. It's a great thing. You have to listen to it. It's such great conversation. The light podcast. So for those who missed the book tour, we recorded every conversation, edited it down to the best of the best. And, you know, it touches on the book, but we also each share our own stories of finding light and developing friendships and relationships. It's really a fun set of conversations that are now on Audible. And then you, you have one of the, uh, the interviews or the conversations mm -hmm. or with Oprah Winfrey. The and, one and only. Yeah. <laughs> the Oprah went for it. And it airs. That Oprah. That Oprah. Mm -hmm. And it's airing on April 25th on Netflix as a special. Yeah. That uh, will be televised. Because when you're with Oprah, you just televise it. I just feel like, yeah, you have to televise it. Yeah. yeah. But you have actually become friends with Oprah Winfrey. Now, you guys are really... I mean, Oprah was one of the very early supporters before Barack was even thinking about running. I mean, she spotted him when he was a U.S. senator, and she has sort of been... Oprah is that person who never asks for anything, but is always there with her generosity and love and support. There isn't anything you can't ask her to do if you are a friend that she won't try to do. Um, so she, she is who she appears to be. Yeah. Uh, and I am lucky to call her friend. Uh, I want to show a clip from your special. Here's a look at the light we carry, Michelle Obama and Oprah Winfrey. When you first arrived in Hawaii, you were looking for, and I understand why, you're a working woman and had never been to Hawaii, so uh, yeah. you're looking for the Hawaii on Hawaii Five O. Yes. Those of you who remember that show. My ties. My and ties and honeymoon sets on the beach. And honeymoon suites. But in instead... Yeah, instead, it was a trip home to visit his family. That's where he was from. He wasn't going back to some island vacation. He was going back to be with his people. But I was young, and I was... It was cold in Chicago, and I thought, I'm going to Hawaii with my man. It's going to be so romantic. <laughs> <laughs> and then we landed, and we went straight to Toot and Gramps' apartment. No ocean. It was a high-rise building. Go up to the 10th floor, you know, walk in. Looks like my grandparents' house. Might as well be on the south side of Chicago. <laughs> Isn't that reality? I love it. <laughs> Michelle Obama, everybody. The light we carry, Michelle Obama and Oprah Winfrey, premieres April 25th on Netflix. More Tonight Show after the break. Stick around. Thank you, as always. Hey, hey.